Since 1903, the Classical Association has championed classical subjects and widened access to the study of the ancient world. 120 years later, we want you to come with us on a journey. This is our story. The Classical Association is founded to promote, development and maintain the well-being of classical studies, following in the footsteps of the CA of Scotland, established a year earlier. Gender equality was written into the organisation from the very beginning, as were the aims to advocate for outreach, to support teachers, be at the forefront of academic research and to create opportunities for communities of lovers of classical learning to come together. These communities, independent regional branches of classics enthusiasts, started to spring up across England and Wales. Our mission has always been to support the study of the ancient past, especially in schools and universities, even in challenging circumstances. Whilst we still do these three key pillars of our work, since 2003, there have been 20 years of change and so much progress to celebrate what we are now. The CA is the UK Subject Association for Classics. Since 2015, following the merger with the Joint Association of Classical Teachers, we've continued their good work to support students, teachers and education professionals at all levels. We fund summer schools and outreach events, organise teach meets, host competitions, advocate for the subject, create resources and are leading on qualifications reform. The CA is a well-established, dynamic and modern charity with a very wide remit and reach. We have thousands of members from across our national membership and our local branches throughout the country. In just the last 20 years, we've given over more than two million pounds to support classical outreach projects of various types in communities throughout the UK. We give smaller grants to fund school workshops, talks, outreach projects, professional development, museum visits, and short films, and larger grants to support major projects like classics and communities, and we also support the funding of the Hellenic and Roman Library in London, which CA members can access for free. The Classical Association supports world-leading research through our journals and through our annual conference, the highlight of the UK Classics calendar. The CA exists in order to support, advocate for and widen access to the study of classical subjects, and together we're building a bright and sustainable future for our subject and for our organisation. We are a community of members with diverse interests, from those who've been with us for half a century, to those taking their first steps in classics or building their careers in it. We thank all of those who work for us or who give their time to support classical subjects. We have a council of trustees and officers led by our chair and our president and brand new subject teams for all classical subjects we couldn't exist without our brilliant volunteers who sit on our boards, which bring together experts in their field at all career stages to organise the production of our publications and review academic research, to allocate £100,000 worth of grants, to push for education reform and advocate for classics. We are also indebted to the support of our vice presidents, comprising distinguished colleagues and former presidents. Hello there, what a pleasure it was to be president of the Classical Association and to be interviewed and uh, to be able to talk about ancient Greece and ancient Rome, two subjects I never tire of talking about. It's a huge honour and a very unexpected one to be the honorary president of the Classical Association in this rather special year. The study of the humanities at the moment is under threat, it's often thought to be pointless, useless, expensive, not worth doing. Quite the contrary. These days, now is the time when we need to stand up for the humanities, for the importance of the humanities in themselves in making us able to understand ourselves and each other. It is for this reason that we recognize those who contribute so much to our community. Since the generous donation of Jeremy Morse in 2002, we've awarded the CA Prize to the individual or project who has made an outstanding contribution to increasing awareness of our discipline. I will always be incredibly grateful to the Classical Association for awarding me its prize in 
2007 and I, I think it's wonderful that um, the focus of the association isn't just on the purely academic um, but that it recognises that a fascination with the ancient world is not just for scholars, not just for those who study at university, that to want to read about Greece, to want to read about Rome, um, that's something that so many people out there want to do. I was incredibly proud in 2021 to be the recipient of the CA Prize, which is now given each year to recognise people who have been really on the forefront of making sure that classics is there for everyone, wherever they might live in the world and whatever level of experience and exposure they have to the ancient world. It is that commitment by the CA, demonstrated through the CA Prize, that classics really is for everyone that I find so inspiring and it is what has drawn me to the subject and what motivates me to continue communicating the subject um, every day. In 2021, we established our annual teaching awards. It was a great privilege to win the 2022 award um, for my work uh, at my own college, Cardiff and Vale. Um, I, I put on classics there in 2019 when I realised that nobody had access to any classical subjects. And I felt that when our students went to apply to university to do uh, the study of the ancient world, to do classics, uh, they were at a disadvantage. And we have quite a lot of socio-economic deprivation in certain areas of our catchment in South Wales. Um, but classics has sort of really caught the imagination and uh, it's been a big success. So I'm very excited to see where the Welsh classics journey is going um, and I hope to be a big part of that in the future. The more we have big problems in the future, the more we have to look back at the classics and the more we have to widen their appeal. Now, that's what the CA is really good at and that's why its mission is so relevant now. Classical Association represents the educational community to exam boards and policymakers to advocate for classics at all levels. Presently, we're leading a review of the current English classical qualifications in anticipation of the next round of exam reform. We're developing our support for the educational community in the short term, too. We run an online CPD programme led by teachers for teachers. We're working with the Historical Association to support practitioners new to ancient history. And we're working with the National Extension College to provide bursaries for teachers of classical civilization. Our half-termly educational bulletin reaches teachers across the country, sharing the resources we're creating, opportunities for students, and news and updates from our growing network of teachers, from PhD students all the way through to experienced heads of department. Since the 1980s, the CA's grants programme has provided generous support for a range of educational and outreach activities, from major grants for initiatives such as Advocating Classics Education and the Roman Coventry Project, to the development of new teaching resources on Greek drama and LGBTQ plus issues from the perspective of antiquity. To further our mission, we prioritise projects which support the teaching and learning of classics in UK schools and amongst the wider public. We sponsor Roman and Greek days at primary schools, interactive sessions for students, and school trips to museums, exhibitions and theatrical performances. We've recently supported a series of workshops at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, a short film adaptation of Euripides Medea, and a Roman pottery masterclass leading to the development of educational materials. Grants to local CA branches provide start-up funding and support a variety of schools, competitions and other activities. The CA also supports summer schools and conferences. Hi, I'm Alicia. And I'm Sarah. And together we run the East London Classic Summer School, which started in 2021. Hi, I'm Kieran, and I've been at the Latin camp for a summer and also this Easter. It's been really helpful to prepare for my GCSEs. Um, yesterday we did some harder grammar questions and today we're going to go through some past papers and it'll be really helpful just to get ready for something. So we just want to say a huge thank you to the Classical Association for all of your support. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, we introduced a scheme providing financial support for Classics PhD students based at UK universities. Other highlights from the last 20 years include major grants for the Cambridge-led Greek Lexicon Project and Lani Philologique, the premier bibliographical resource for classics. Our website has lots of information on previous projects and how to apply for a CA grant. At our centenary in 2003, Chris Stray said, the history of the CA is largely the history of its publications. 
This is still the case today, but much has also changed in terms of the people, content and format of our journals. Firstly, the women have arrived. Catherine Clark became the first female editor of Greece and Rome in 2001. Miriam Griffin became editor of CQ a year later, shortly followed by Judith Mossman to form the first all-female editing team. And as of this year, CR also has an all-female team. Our journals have become very international with editors based in the US, Australia and Austria as well as the UK. And we have welcomed an increase in contributions from Asia, South America and Africa. The content of the journals has also transformed in recent years. CR now publishes reviews of museum exhibitions, along with subject profiles on themes such as eco-criticism. Indeed, judging by the books across the editor's desks, the ancient environment is currently a hot topic. But perhaps the most striking development is the journal's digitisation. The journals are now read more online than they are in print, and there is some content across all three titles free to read. Our articles are downloaded at a rate of 32 every hour. It has been a privilege to be part of these exciting developments and I'm sure that the journals will be at the forefront of the Classical Association's activities for a long time to come. The CA's publications include two flagship education related titles. Omnibus is a magazine aimed primarily at sixth form students and their teachers, although it also has an avid wider readership among CA members. Omnibus is edited by a small team of academics and school teachers. It's published twice a year and in its long history of over 40 years, it has included contributions from many of the leading lights in classic scholarship, and especially Oliver Taplin and Robin Osborne, whose contribution to the magazine has been immeasurable. Omnibus is also home to two annual student competitions, the Gladstone Memorial Prize and the Sam Hood Translation Prize. I can't be the only classicist whose love of the subject was nurtured as a sixth form student by leafing through the latest issue in the school library. And it's such a delight to see Omnibus still going strong after all these years. The Journal of Classics Teaching is the leading journal for the teaching of Latin, Ancient Greek, Classical Civilization and Ancient History in the UK. It is global in outlook, bringing together international contributors and firmly rooted in the idea that classics education can thrive through the cross-fertilisation of expertise and experience from across the world. It originated as the voice of Jack in 1963 and has been expertly edited by Stephen Hunt since 2012, becoming fully online and open access in 2015. It regularly includes research that is not just of interest to teachers of classical subjects, but that is influential in shaping pedagogical practice. One of the real highlights of the Journal of Classics teaching for me is the space it gives to new voices in classics education regularly featuring pieces by newly or recently qualified teachers based on research undertaking during their initial teacher training. The highlight of our annual calendar is the CA Conference, held each year at a different UK institution and bringing classicists with diverging interests together from across the world. Whilst our conference moves each year, in the last 20 years, our branches have grown from strength to strength. In 2014, I was approached by a sixth form, Katrina Kelly, asking me if I would be president of a brand new branch of the Classical Association. Now, I was intrigued by this prospect, an 18-year-old coming up to me saying that she had a great vision and venture that she wanted me to join her on, but also because it was going to take place in Lytham St Anne's, not very far away from where my mum grew up and where I have lots of memories of coming up for half-term holidays. So I jumped in and went, yes, let's do it. And almost a decade later, here we are, with one of the largest branches of the CA in the country, with a fantastic record of extraordinary speakers coming from all over the country to receive the warm Lytham welcome. And most importantly, I think, a reputation nationally, and indeed I would go so far as to say internationally, for the tea and cake that's served at every talk. Out of the pandemic, things moved online, but exciting things were afoot as we moved out of lockdown. My name's Jessica and I'm the chairperson of the Southport and Birkdale Classical Association. We started last year, primarily having been a member of the Lytham branch for many years, really inspired by what was happening up here. But also Southport kind of traditionally hasn't had a lot of provision for classics in the, in the community or amongst the schools. And as a state school teacher of classics and someone who didn't get to experience it as a subject until A-level myself, I've been really passionate about making sure that classics reaches as many different uh, parts of society as possible. So that was my aim in doing so. 
and we've had an audience, our largest audience of 100 and a kind of minimum of 60, which we were really surprised at to see with, as I say, quite short notice of setting it up that so many people have been interested. So we're hopefully making it more accessible to people in the local area who are trying to get there after work as well. Um, it's just been hugely enjoyable. It's been great to meet new people. And it's also been great just to be with others who love the subject as much as I do. Happy I live in a very deprived area of the UK. Deprived economically, but also deprived in terms of access to classics. In my hometown, for instance, there's not a single school or college that offers any route into classics. But at the same time, there's also a huge local enthusiasm for the Roman heritage of the area and some thriving local history groups. So I wanted to set up a new branch of the CA to tap into that local enthusiasm and to offer some routes into classics that may not have been there before. This is our first year of operation, so we're still reaching out to new audiences, but we plan to cast the net as wide as possible. We're already running evening seminars for adult audiences, and we've been running family days to get kids involved and enthusiastic about the ancient world through storytelling and crafts and even Lego. In 2021, the Liverpool and District CA restarted with new vigour, thanks to its chair, Alice Case. I just love uh, meeting other people from different walks of life who have this interest in classics in the ancient world that don't define themselves as classicists. Um, and I think that's really inspiring and it's particularly inspiring for young children who come along and sort of don't really understand the subject's place um, and kind of wonder whether it's something they can do and when they find people from all different walks of life who still have this interest I find that really inspiring. Years ago, when I kind of first attended a CA branch, I think you know, certainly when I was, was younger and a student, it felt like it was mainly for, for academics or people studying it. I think that's changed a lot now. I feel like it, it doesn't matter whether you're brand new to the subject or you've been studying it for years, I really think it's very, very accessible now. And meanwhile, down the road in Chester, exciting plans came to fruition in 2022, thanks to sixth former Isabel Sykes. The main push for us to found the Chester branch was the closure of the classics department at my school because I'd already been thinking a lot about improving accessibility to classics for local state schools and because Chester is such an amazing city where our history is still overwhelmingly present, establishing the Chester branch was the logical next step. Outreach is at the heart of everything we do at the Classical Association. We seek to engage new audiences and help them to discover more about the ancient world. We do this via our videos and social media, our competitions and our new podcast. The Classics Podcast has something for everyone. From classics content for school students and teachers to interviews and unique modern stories inspired by classical mythology. It was fun to talk about classical Greece with some academic experts for our Ancient History A-Level series which we hope will be a great extension or revision tool, and to narrate a couple of really entertaining short stories for the epic compendium, including a reimagining of Orpheus's last moments with Eurydice. You can find us on all podcast platforms at The Classics Podcast or on Instagram at The Classical Pod. And our own compilation of classically inspired stories was produced in audio and written form from our 2022 competition. Hello, my name is Alan Gaw. It was a great honour to have my short story, The Mother of Heroes, selected for a prize, and then to have it narrated on the Classics podcast by author and former Classical Association president, Lindsay Davis. My story was inspired by the timeless epics that tell of the Trojan War, but I chose to tell the story not through the eyes of one of the warriors, but through the Trojan horse herself, the mother of heroes of the title. I'm very pleased that the judges enjoyed it and also grateful that winning the prize has allowed many more people to read it. In 2023, our annual competition was a photography one, inspired by ancient philosophy. So, what is so great about classics? They're with us all around us, all the time. If you're going to raise your eyes above the shop level to look at architecture, you've only got to listen to language. 
You've only got to think of ideas about who we are as people and where we come from, and the classics light up any conversation of that kind. I have a magpie brain. It doesn't settle on any one thing for very long, and it's always looking for something new and shiny. Classics is such a big field, and there are lots of shiny things. So one day I can be working on lyric poetry, and the next day I could be talking about neoclassical architecture. I could be giving a lecture on the history of medicine, and then writing a blog post on myth retellings, or giving a tour of a Roman fort. No two days are ever the same in classics, and that's what I love most about it. Everyone that I've met who's been involved in classics has been so passionate about their subject. Classics does attract these sorts of people who are dedicated and engaging and incredibly insightful. I think it really allows us to examine ourselves by understanding how visible and influential some strands of the past still are today, from pieces of ancient architecture to elements of the human condition itself. I firmly believe that classics has something to offer for everyone, and particularly now, uh, its richness and diversity are being brought to light and its audience being expanded with broader and easier accessibility. And so, what does 2024 hold? We look forward to welcoming you to another conference venue, to launching a brand new competition, and to being inspired by our next president. The CA brings people together in a way that no other organisation could do. It brings together school teachers and university researchers, kids and academics, people from all over the country. It connects us. And in a world where classics is constantly under threat, we need as many connections as we can find. Join us. If you're a member of the Classical Association, you have access to all sorts of resources and communities and discussions. But you can also help us with our mission to support people of all ages and of all backgrounds by widening access to the study of classical subjects. Please join us. So come and join the Classical Association, learn more about the ancient world and be part of a brilliant community of like-minded people. Wishing the Classical Association a very happy 120th birthday and here's to another 120 years of the Classical Association spreading the good news, the euangelion, about the fascination of classical culture of the ancient world. So thank you for everything that you do and keep it up. Happy 120th birthday, Classical Association. My goodness, you're almost as old as the civilizations you celebrate and disseminate around the world. Um, as Tolkien himself, a student of classical languages, of course, might have said, happy 12th birthday. Congratulations, and here's to the next 120 years. <laughs>